Yo, what's up guys? You've got Lightning here, coming back at you today with another video. Today I want to talk about something a bit different rather than another gameplay. Today I want to talk about things I do before my solo queue games that I, I think everyone should be doing. Uh, at least some of these things to ensure you get the best possible chance to win the game. Uh, and, and to give you the best idea on how you can go about winning that particular game. You know, because every game's different. Uh, some matchups are the same, but generally every game's going to be different because there's a so many things that can dictate uh, how the game should be played, the early game, the, the late game, uh, and particular matchups and things to look out for. Uh, so we're going to go over a few of those things, um, starting with from before you even queue up for solo queue uh, and all the way up until when you hit that laning phase and you start going to lane. So sit back and relax and check it out. Uh, if you've got any suggestions on what else I could add to this video, uh, let me know um, if there's anything that you don't agree with. Uh, let me know in the comments. So the first thing you've got to realize before you start a game is your state of mind. How are you feeling today? How are you feeling about playing a game? Are you stressed about anything? Is there anything going on in your day that could affect your decisions or your, your thought process in, in solo queue when you're playing? Um, these things can affect you so much. You know, um, If you're stressed and you can't focus properly, you might get angry and tilted and then you, you know, it just gives you a better chance to lose the game. So I, what I always do is try and make sure that I'm not tired or stressed. Uh, I try and make sure that all of my tasks uh, for the day are completed, like at work, because um, I work full time, you know, like uh, 50 plus hours a week. So there's a lot of things on my mind all the time. I try and make sure that, um, you know, everything's completed and also make sure that I'm hydrated. I think being hydrated is a is a really big thing um it helps your brain function you know properly um normally i live on coffee uh <laughs> that's not very good i suggest water that's the best option so all in all you know you, you want to make sure there's nothing on your mind that's bothering you uh you're not tired or stressed from work or whatever um and make sure you've completed all your tasks of the day like the washing the dishes uh you know, all that crap that you don't want to do no one wants to do that but you got to make sure it's done because you know if you're like me, you know, you'll be in the middle of the game thinking, oh, I gotta do the dishes, oh, I gotta do the dishes, oh, I gotta do the washing, or I've gotta take out the trash, things like that. And then, you know, last of all, stay hydrated. Make sure your brain is at full capacity, for, you know, to, to function properly, you know, stick to your eight glasses of water a day. Um, and you'll be surprised how much that helps. If you're tired and dehydrated, you just can't play properly at all. Uh, and that covers that. The next thing will be double checking your setups, okay? So what I mean by that is your mouse, your keyboard, your monitor, you know, all your hardware, is that set up correctly? Is your is your mouse comfortable when you put it on your mouse pad? Is your when you sit in your chair, is that comfortable looking at your monitor? Is it, are you ergonomically um sitting correctly so you can actually play uh comfortably, right? Because if you're not comfortable, you know, you get back aches and leg aches or whatever. Uh so I try and sit in my chair properly. Um, you know, at the right height so I can see the screen like straight, I don't have to look up or down, and I'm sitting with my legs flat on the ground. That's the best way you can possibly sit, and you want to keep your back straight as possible. Uh, with that being said, you know, a lot of chairs come with different curves and, the, and whatnot to, to mold around your back. That's excellent, right? So the more comfortable you are, um, <clears throat> the more chances you have of, you know, not getting aches or pains or, you know, not going to lose focus in game. I think that's really important, right? So other than that, um, you want to check your runes, okay? So say when I queue up, I always select top and mid, okay? Because, or top or top and jungle mostly, because obviously I play a rally a lot, so that's going to be my main my main pick. And I can play jungle. I used to play jungle quite a lot, right? So I'll always select that second. Um, I can auto fill mid if I need to, but mostly if I get auto filled, I'm going to be playing support. Now I've got no problem with that because I used to play support quite a lot, but some of you. Uh, <laughs> quite a lot of you uh, may not play support at all or don't like it and when you get autofilled are you are you prepared for what can happen when you get autofilled are you prepared to play support do you have rune setups do you have uh, specific go-to champions in the support role uh, that you can play if you do get autofilled right and the next thing you want to check is your mastery is now for me I only have one mastery page and I update it every single game because every matchup's different even on Aurelia I might change one or two mastery points uh, in my in my build, depending on uh, depending on who I'm versing, who their jungler is, that sort of thing. So 
it pays to uh, some people like to have you know 20 mastery pages for different champions and matchups and whatnot but i just have one i change it every game and that works for me um it, you might be different but um that that's what works for me okay so that's the those are the things that you should be doing before the salt before you even queue up before you even open the client or you know before you before you open the client work out how you're feeling should you be playing ranked at this time um yeah are you hydrated are you stressed work out all that first and then go into your client look at your look at your hardware your monitor your keyboard your mouse work out if you're comfortable check your runes are they set up for your selected roles and do you have a support uh you know sort of page uh, or an autofill page in general uh do you know what masteries you should be taking are you prepared for an autofill that's the big thing i think so that covers before you even get in queue up for solo queue let's move on to into champ select okay so in champion select when you get into champion select the first thing you, you do obviously okay so now it's 10 ban system so you, you ban you ban you look at the role you got say you got your preferred role right saying i want to play aurelia uh, I'm going to ban someone like Riven or uh, like Pantheon or, or someone like that. We'll see who my team's banning. Um, a lot of the time I'll ban Yasuo. I hate Yasuo so much and I'll just, I prefer to ban him every game. But if someone else bans him and Zach, you know, I, I'll ban Riven or Pantheon. I hate those matchups, firstly because Riven for me is, I used to be able to beat her really, really easily. Uh, but I feel like with the new items uh the small changes to riven as well uh throughout the you know, this last couple of seasons uh it, it's just made it really strong and in mobility is just ridiculous you know like uh if, if you lose the early game you just can't catch up and she's also really good late game in team fights whereas you're you're okay in team fights uh you know but but she's better uh she's got that engage that aoe stun so that's why i just don't i try to avoid that matchup wherever possible and Pantheon's just a son of a bitch. Everyone hates Pantheon, okay? So, um, you know, you want to look to ban the champion that, that is going to affect you the most, uh, you know, that you don't want to play against. That's the first thing you should look at, okay? Second thing, look at who your teammates are picking. Uh, are, they, are they picking meta champions? Uh, are they picking uh, off-meta champions? Are they picking good ADCs? That sort of thing. Uh, you want, and check out your, your, what your team comp might be shaping up to look like. Um, if you're if your first pick and you pick your your champion, check who the other team is picking. Okay, so see if they're picking to counter pick you, or see if they're picking maybe just like if they're a one trick pony, or see if they're picking a champion that you know you can shit on in lane. Because if you're playing your main role, generally you'll know the matchups quite well. So when I'm, for example, when I've, if I've picked Aurelia first and then someone picks, uh, you know, uh, Fiora third on the other team uh i know that i know exactly what i have to do in that lane to and with my runes and my masteries and i know exactly what i want to do and i know that i can play that matchup quite confidently okay and then when you do that so you've sorted out your lane selected your runes your masteries that you want to take now you've got to look at your team while they're picking if your first pick it's really easy because you've got heaps of time if they while they're picking what i like to do is go on to op.gg and type in their name and <laughs> it's pretty it's pretty sad right but um i like to look at uh if, if they're on a lose streak if they're on an off roll uh for example if they've got like you know 500 games on ariana and they're in the jungle and they've picked i don't know lee sin um yeah i don't know why you'd do that but if they've done that right like <laughs> they're not in that are not in their confident role by the looks of it right so you want to you want to sort of uh take it step by step and just see who who's on who's on an off roll who's on an on roll uh if someone picks Lee Sin and they've got 500 games of Ariana uh you know he's he's definitely got a cross beside his name but if everyone else has ticks beside their name you know you can generally uh, assume that you've got a everyone's sort of on their on their on champions on their good champions right so you want to check that if if maybe two of your teammates are on uh off rolls or or tilting um you know you you might want to consider dodging, you know, because um, you'll be surprised if, if people are on tilt, you know, you'll be surprised how bad they can really play, like, and it really affects people, you know, people tilt really, really bad, I remember, you know, back in season five, I think it was, I went on like a 15 game lose streak, and I was devastated, um, you know, and, and it happens, um, people can do that, and if, if someone's on like a three, five, seven game lose streak, then, 
you know, maybe it's best just to dodge that game. Um, you know, you do get two free dodges a day, essentially. The first dodge, you get a five minute ban, or is it six minutes? And you lose three LP, right? The second dodge, if you dodge again in that day within a 16 hour period, um, you lose 10 LP and you get banned for half an hour. And it resets every 16 hours. So essentially you get two free dodges a day. You lose a total of 13 LP, you know, for those two dodges and you get banned for a short amount of time. But, you know, is that not better than losing 40 LP potentially? You know, if you're in, uh, you know, so if your MMR is bad, you could lose 20 per game maybe even more. So you've only lost 13 LP instead of instead of losing 40 plus. So that's what I look for first, okay? To see my team. And see, and the next thing, if, if that all checks out, then I wanna check, is my team comp good? Check my lanes. What lanes are more likely to win? Do, do we have an aggressive bot lane um, that can shit on there? I don't know, if they have like a Soraka or a Sona, um, you know, an all-in bot lane um, where they could potentially snowball. Is the mid lane looking like uh, a counter pick matchup? Is the jungle looking like, um, you know, the Lee Sin might shit on the whoever, the Yamumu, for example? Um, do they have a really good team comp uh, for team fighting? Uh, I look at all those things and determine is this game worth playing? You know, like if you're in bronze, it doesn't really matter because, you know, you can really carry with any champion. But when you get to sort of high elos, like I, I guess like high plat to, and diamond onwards, um, you know, team comps kind of matter, in my opinion. So if you've got a really bad team comp, like I remember not even two weeks ago, I had a game where I had a Shaco support. The next game I had a Nunu support. The next game, uh, my jungle and mid laner both picked um, AD champions after I picked Aurelia. And that happened twice in a row. And I was like, wow, I should have dodged those games and I could have saved myself, you know, 40 LP. But, um... You know, so it's it's worth checking that out and, and looking at all that and getting an idea of what the game's shaping up to look like before it even starts, before you even get into the loading screen. That's while you're in Champion Select. Do that. Do those things. Check it out. Um, check out your team. See how they're, you know, because you can sort of get a good idea of how they're, what their state of mind is like by their last couple of games. Have they performed? Um, see who they were versing and just check out all those things just quickly. And it doesn't take long. Um... It doesn't take long just to have a quick look, uh, just so you've got a better idea than what you did before. Okay, so once you've done that and the game's all locked in, you just want to make sure your summoners are correct, make sure your runes are correct, your masteries are correct, make sure you've done all those things in op.gg, and then you'll move into the loading screen. And we'll move on to the loading screen, and I'll explain what I do in the loading screen to determine how my early game is going to play out. So I'll move on to that now. So the first thing I do on the loading screen, right, is look at, once it's loaded uh, and I can see that all the champions are on the loading screen, uh, I see, make sure my opponent is who I think they are. For example, Fiora, like I was saying earlier, right? Uh, first thing I check, uh, what are her summoners? Does she have Ignite or TP? That is the big one. Because that'll determine whether she's going for more of a split push Fiora, or, you know, if she's going TP, she'll, you know, TP back to lane, TP bot lane, make plays around the map, okay? Um, next thing is go to op.gg again, check her runes, it's, does she have uh, scaling runes, does she have flat runes, is she going a lot of attack speed or early damage, uh, her masteries as well, is she going sort of 18-0-12 for sustain, or is she going 18-12-0 for, you know, early game damage, does she want to fight me early, that's what I want to work out, because from there, you can work out what kind of a player she is, you can work out, um, if she's a good Fiora or if she's uh, inexperienced, you can see how many games she's played. And, you know, that those things those things do matter, you know. Um, you can see if she's on a win streak or a lose streak. Um, you can see if she's, you know, like I said before, playing for early or late. And you can generally tell that through her masteries and if she's running scaling uh, resists or not. Or scaling health, for example. Um, and then, like I said before, the summoner spells. That'll determine what kind of game you want to play. And so you can work out what you want to do in the lane, how you want to play the lane based on what she's picked for her runes, right? Because you can see it all on op.gg. And if she's picked, for example, scaling armor, scaling magic resist, you can generally fight her, you know, level, level three is a good time to fight when you've got all your abilities. She'll have all of hers, but, you know, you've got, you've got potentially sort of six more armor magic resist than her if you've picked flat. Um, and that's a good time to fight her, you know, um, depending on what she's, her starting items, she might concede the lane early, um, 
and let you push her in and just farm. She might she might manipulate the lane like that, you know, trick you into pushing early. Um, but you know, you can generally tell if she's going for the scaling game. Is she going for that late game, that late game power, or is she just going to try and brawl you in the top lane? You can work all of that out from the loading screen. So make sure you do that when you when you get into the loading screen. It's your checklist, okay? Go into op.gg, type in her name, or go to the live game on your op.gg, and you'll be able to see her. Check her runes. What runes does she have? Uh, check her masteries. What masteries are, is she running? Check her history. Is she on a win streak or a lose streak? Check how many games she's played as Fiora. Is she a Fiora one trick with, you know, 500 Fiora games? Or does she only have five Fiora games this season? Is she a top main? That's another thing to look at. If she's not a top lane main, you can manipulate the top lane and do different farming and wave manipulation techniques to... Uh, make her lose CS, zone her from XP, you know, call your jungler to, you know, get the top tower, put pressure on top, you know, let, let, let them know you can carry, um, things like that, and you can have a way better understanding on the whole entire picture before the game even starts, before you even spawn on the map, okay, and it's so good, right, so that's what I do every game, I'll always go to uh, lolnexus.com or whatever it is, or even just op.gg, check the matchup, see who's on um, you know, if my lane opponent is on a good, uh, good, good matchup, if she's on a good, sorry, her, her main champion or whatever, and go from there. So that's, those are all the things that I do in the loading screen. Pretty basic, but it's mostly evolved around your matchup, your opponent, and her summoners, and how the game's going to play out, and what her goals are in the game. You can generally tell from just all of that, okay? So next thing, and the last thing will be in the game, what you do in the game. So we'll move on to that, and, uh, We'll conclude this video with what you do in the beginning of the game. So, last but not least, when you spawn in the map, you need to ask yourself, okay, now I know what my opponent wants to do, based on what I've researched about her uh, in the loading screen, uh, in the loading screen and champ select, right? So now you have to ask yourself, how will you play the game? Uh, who's their jungler? Are they AD or AP? Will they likely gank you? Now that that does matter because that determines you know what your first back, uh, what you're gonna buy in your first back. You know, are you gonna get an extra Doran's blade for some sustain and health? Uh, am I gonna try and rush Ninja Tabai for you know if they have an AD champion? Also, they might have an uh, like a Master Yi, which would be you know another auto attacking champion. So if you do get ganked, you've got that extra uh, resistances against the gank to help you escape and not die that sort of thing, right? And it also helps against your laner as well. So it's killing two birds with one stone. You know, if they have a, a tanky uh, a tanky jungler, maybe that doesn't do a shitload of damage. Maybe you want to rush a phage for the extra health and the, you know, the, the phage pass of this, this, the move speed uh, boost, right? Um, you know, health is, is, is like the universal resist in League of Legends. You know, it, it defends you against, uh, uh, you know, AD damage and magic damage, you know, because extra health, the, you know, the extra damage required to burst you down is greater than, than what it was before, uh, without the phage, for example, right? So those are things you can look at from, from level one as you're walking the lane, um, you know, you might you, you might already know what you want to start based on who your opponent is. Uh, for me, it's most of the time it's a corrupting potion as a rally, right? So I'll start that and then that's what I can work out before I even walk to lane and, and start attacking the minions. Um, Another thing is look at their jungler and your jungler. Do you have a farming jungler, a ganking jungler, you know, a tank jungler, a slow slow farming jungler? Um, it can help your team massively if you are able to get a ward into your opponent's jungle or otherwise uh, your blue buff, just in case they are starting their uh, red buff on the opposite side to your jungler and they might invade uh, your jungler's second buff. Now all those things can help, if you can help your jungler uh, and prevent an invade, prevent him from dying, that's that's one thing you've done to contribute to your team, uh, you know, to help them win the game already, you know, if you hadn't have placed that ward early, um, you know, your jungler may have been invaded by the other jungler and died, things can happen, you know, lots of different things can happen, I've seen, I've played Master Yi, uh, you know, in gold, even plat elo, and just rushed their my opponent's blue buff at level one sat in the bush stole that stole the grump gone and found my whole entire jungle and that is sitting in their jungle like what the fuck just happened 
you know, because you get scuttle crab as well. So they're forced to gank, you know, as a lower level than you. And by the time you've done that, you're level five, you, you, you know. Um, and it puts the other per junglers so far behind, like you wouldn't even believe it. So one simple ward can save the game. So you want to try and do that wherever possible. Because uh, generally you won't need, if you can ward it about one minute, uh, or one and a half minutes, uh, you know, you won't, need, you won't need your ward till about three minutes anyway, so uh, you'll still have a ward for then. So try and do that wherever possible. Um, you need to look at your laner. Um, you should you should already know, are they going to try and play aggressive? But one thing you can do is see what they do at level one. As soon as the first wave comes to lane, see what they do. Are they auto-attacking the minions? Because if they are, they're trying to push and create pressure on you. But if they're not, uh, if they're trying to let the lane sort of play out and wait for you to make the first move, uh, maybe they want to be pushed in so that they can farm safely. Maybe they're scared of you or not confident on the champion or maybe they have another game plan. Because conceding the lane at level 1 or pushing the lane at level 1 does not automatically make you win or lose the lane. If you concede the lane at level 1 and let them push you in, that's a strategy. It's not. It doesn't mean you lose. It's, it's a good strategy for champions that have a weak level 2 um, and a strong level 4, for example. Uh, as a rally, you know, quite often I let the opposition push me in, and then and then when the wave sort of rebounds and resets, I'm level four, and they're level four, and I've got my power spike, and I haven't had to fight them at all. I've just had to um, get the wave, the, get the minions bouncing off my tower, and that's what they might do. Um, but if they do push you in, you know, you can work out what what their play style is going to be. Uh, like for example, a, a Trindomir, uh, you know, he'll he'll want to push, get level two, and all in you. Uh, you know, if you're may try and push that level 2 as well to get that advantage, get some vitals in her, in her you know, enhanced auto attacks on you. Things like that. you got to think about all of that. The first two levels, how are you going to play it? Um, and you got to then you got to work out, okay, based on my ward, have, has the jungler come in to invade? If he hasn't, if I haven't seen him, will he do a three camp clear and then come top? That's why at three minutes, everyone tries to ward the bush in top lane. Um, generally, between... 240 in three minutes is when most junglers will sort of clear finish clearing and then come top some a little bit earlier so they can actually be there at, in your lane by sort of 245 and that's quite fast so you need to be onto that and make sure you've got that ward down and these are all things to think about um the next thing is to think about is is will you be split pushing based on what summoners they have does the fiora for example have ignite um, is she going for an aggressive lane? If she is, yeah, then you can build for the 1v1 and, and split push because you have TP and she's got to ignite. So she, she's going to want to group with a team, you know, you know, try and snowball off you and potentially, um, you know, group with the team. But since you've got t TP, you know, you can, you can split push for days. And then if she comes to answer you, that's when you can TP into the fight. It's a massive advantage. But another thing you, you should take note of is, uh, mid laners these days seem to take TP quite a lot. So check if their mid laner has TP. Their mid laner should never be able to duel you in the game since you're a duelist. But um, if they do have to answer your split push, if you are split pushing with a TP, then you know um, that's their TP down. You could probably kill them, um, unless they're a strong mid laner, tanky, you know, like Cassidy, and they can get away or something like that. You know, there's so many different champions they could play. And that's just one thing to look at. But if you both have, both have TP, do you want to go for an early bat, get a Doran's shield, uh, Doran's blade, or something like that? Um, just think about all those things when you first get into the game, okay? Okay, so that sums up uh, my list of things to do before you start solo queue. Uh, my solo queue checklist, I guess I like to call it. Uh, I hope you guys liked it, and I hope uh, it wasn't... Uh, it's looking quite long, so... I'll try and cut it off here, but thanks for watching anyway, guys, and I hope you enjoyed that. And if you've got any suggestions of this video, just let me know in the comments, and I'll uh, definitely catch you guys in the next video. Yeah.